All right, today we're talking about one of my uh, favorite subjects, oh. abandoned towns. And they're hiding pure evil. Pure evil. Yeah. Have you ever been to an abandoned town before? I, I honestly haven't, but it's definitely something that I'd like to do. Yeah, so. right? Yeah. I've always wanted to do it, like do a ghost hunt or something like that. Would be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let's get into it then. Yeah, let's find out. To start off our list today, we are going to take a deep dive into Dudley Town, Connecticut, also known as the town that never existed or the village of the damned. The town was settled in the 1740s and thrived for a while before falling victim to disease, crop failure, and mysterious unexplained death, which began taking place shortly after the Dudley family came to visit. Many villagers believed that the family had arrived with a curse brought from England to damn the residents of the town. So shortly after the misfortune started, Dudley Town's abandonment began as many villagers fled for their lives in fear, which was a pretty good call, I guess, because it is said that those who stayed began to slowly descend into the realm of insanity, one by one, with many claiming to have witnessed strange creatures emerging from the forest surrounding the town. Those who enter that same forest today tell of a deafening silence that feels eerily thick and almost suffocating. Reports of aggressive animals along the town's hiking trails, desperate screams coming from the treetops, and the fact that many people and pets have mysteriously gone missing in the area over the years might be a few reasons why the town remains abandoned and illegal to enter to this day, which honestly just makes me wonder what other secrets might be hiding within its historically dark parameters. All right, next up we have La Noria in Chile. Now, when I describe this place, it's gonna sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm really not. There are tons of videos of people exploring this ghost town, and it looks exactly what it sounds like when described. An incredibly creepy abandoned town with bones, some human, a lot human, scattered around the place. Open coffins, crosses everywhere. It's really quite the vibe. This place sits in the Atacama Desert. It was once a bustling mining town, but when the mines dried up, the people started new lives, but their dead were left behind. And as the years went on, people would come to this place and loot it. Even coffins would be opened up and items like jewelry they'd been buried with would be stolen. So tons of graves now sit out in the open with the bones of the dead still sitting inside of them. So it probably comes as no surprise that people will claim to see some unexplained things going on here, especially at night, shadowy figures or even just full-bodied apparitions. And of course, the haunting sounds of the angered spirits are said to echo through the night as well. Alrighty, next up we have an ancient town with some pretty sadistic sacrificial rituals. Well, not so much a town as a temple in a town, specifically the Moch Temple located in the northwest of Peru. The temple thrived between 100 and 800 AD. The people of the town were known for producing sophisticated goods for their time, including hand-painted pottery made from molds. They also were incredibly advanced when it came to gold working, monument construction, and city planning. While at one time the town was well known for their advancements, including their incredibly efficient irrigation systems, in 1995 they became known for something a bit different. You see, archaeologists discovered a huge sacrificial grave site near the temple filled with the bodies of male sacrificial victims who likely did not go willingly. As it is believed, many of them were travelers who met their unfortunate ends while crossing the Mochu land in search of their final destinations. Murals on the walls of the temple illustrate the men's final moments moments, showing them naked and hogtied before being slaughtered after which the men's skulls were turned into cups used to collect the BLOOD of the deceased so that it may be offered up as a gift to the gods. Super gross. Next, we head over to China to discuss Kowloon Walled City. Unlike pretty much every spot on this list, I think this place would have actually been uh, much scarier before it was abandoned. The Kowloon Walled City was this crazy, super dense, and sort of chaotic place in Hong Kong. Picture a bunch of cramped, towering buildings all squished together, a giant concrete jungle. Back in the Song Dynasty around 960 to 1279 AD, there was this cool walled garrison in Kowloon. Over time, it got kind of abandoned, and during the British colonial period, nobody really bothered about it. People just started building random structures within its walls. Fast forward to the 20th century, and it turned 
into this insane unplanned mega city within a city. The buildings were like a tangled mess of staircases, pipes, and wires. It became famous for being overcrowded, and it was also basically lawless. The only ones really governing the place were the triads. It was tons of crime, and it was very dark. Because of how dense the place was, it was hard for natural light to even reach the lower levels of the city, so people had to go to the roofs of their buildings to get any light. Eventually, in the 90s, the Hong Kong government decided the place needed to go and demolition began in March of 1993. Today though, some of the ruins still remain. Next up we've got the Bangar Fort located in Rajasthan, India. The small town was built in the 17th century by an emperor named Madho Singh as a testament of love to his son Man Singh. At its peak, the town was home to over 10,000 people. Today, living in the town is prohibited. And while while tourists and locals may visit the ruins during the day, they are strictly banned from entering the area before sunrise and after sunset. And this is because of the fact that since Bangar Fort's re-establishment as an unaltered landmark in the 21st century, people who have entered the premises during these times have often heard or seen dark spirits. And those who have gone into the forts have either turned up dead or just not turned up at all. Because of this, each night before the sun sets, the forts and the grounds are evacuated, locked, and guarded. This is also why the area has earned the title of most haunted place in India. Many believe the haunting is due to a curse placed on the town during its peak by hermit Baba Baloo, who was living in the area at the time. Shortly after he declared his curse, a devastating earthquake hit the town, causing its people, along with the people from 83 surrounding villages, to vanish overnight. Next on the list is Poveglia Island in Italy. This place has a rather ominous nickname, Ghost Island and that's not just because nobody lives there. This island is basically a mix of a former hospital and a big giant graveyard. So back in the day during the bubonic plague in the 1700s, which was a very fun time, they used Paveglia as a quarantine spot. It was the place you'd get dumped when you were really sick. And then later on, they built a mental hospital there. So it went from a plague quarantine spot, pretty dark already, to a place where even more horrible things happened because mental hospitals were never pleasant and the inmates were never treated well. The hospital eventually closed in the 60s, and the island's been abandoned ever since. So many people died on this island that half of the soil is apparently made up of their remains, which is just wild. Today, the island is completely off limits because for some reason, people need to be told not to go to a place like this. Next up, we've got Koldara, yet another town in Rajasthan, India, with a pretty sordid past. It is said that around 300 years ago, Kaldara was quite a prosperous village where townsfolk lived happily and, despite the area's dry agriculture, were able to grow incredibly abundant crops throughout the years. It wasn't until the arrival of a debaucherous Prime Minister, Salem Singh, that things started to go downhill. When Salem arrived in the town, he set his sights on a beautiful young woman. He claimed he would marry her by any means necessary, including force. He warned the villagers that any attempt to protect the girl and thwart the marriage would result in grave consequences for their lands. And so, the villagers basically said screw it. The entire population of the town, including the young woman that Salim had hoped to marry, left Kaldara. But not before they put a dark curse on its barren lands, ensuring that Salim would never be able to reap the ill earned rewards of what the villagers had sown. To this date, the small town of Kaldara remains abandoned, in almost the same state it had been left in so many years ago, minus the fruitful harvests, of course. Those who have visited the ancient grounds have told of dark forces that they feel are determined to protect the uninhabitable status of the area, as per the villagers' curse, which had been designed so that no one would ever be able to settle in the area again. Next on the list, we have the largest contaminated site in the southern hemisphere, Wittenoom, in western Australia. Australia. This town was surrounded by asbestos mines. There were rich asbestos deposits in the surrounding hills, and back in the day, asbestos was in high demand, being used in construction as a fire resistant and for insulation. So the town grew pretty rapidly as miners and their families settled in the area. Wittenoom was a bumping community. There were schools, shops, a movie theater, but 
As the years went on and concerns about the health risks associated with asbestos exposure began to be a thing, it became pretty obvious that people were living in a death trap. By the 60s and 70s, the health hazards of asbestos became a well-known thing and the demand for it really dried up. The Wittenoom mine closed in 1966, which had pretty much been the sole source of income for the town. And on top of that, the negative health effects were starting to become pretty apparent. By the 2000s, the town had officially been shut down and only a handful of holdouts remained. But as of 2022, there's no one left and in 2023, the place started getting demolished completely. Okay, next on our list today, we have Cinco Saltos, an Argentinian town with a pretty dark past, obviously. The area in which the town resides receives very little sunlight, providing it with a quite fittingly dark and gloomy aura year round. On many occasions, Cinco Saltos has been referred to as the city of witches. This being largely due to the fact that historically, many residents of the area had been dedicated practitioners of black magic, namely, necromancy and witchcraft. It is said that in ancient times, witches would often perform occult rituals in the town. One of the more commonly performed was a ritualistic sacrifice of young men and women on the Pellegrini Lake that ran through the center of the town. It is said that to this day, anyone who stands near the lake at night comes to know the disembodied screams of the many victims said to have lost their lives by the river so long ago. And lastly, we have probably the most apocalyptic looking place on the list. Centralia in Pennsylvania. The town's streets are cracked and smoke constantly rises from the ground. It's hard to believe this place actually exists. It looks like a set from The Walking Dead, but that's because a coal mine fire has been burning beneath the town since 1962. The story begins with a landfill fire that was intentionally ignited near an abandoned coal mine entrance. Unfortunately, the fire unexpectedly spread to the coal mines beneath the town, creating a continuous underground blaze that just hasn't stopped and this has caused some problems primarily all the sinkholes imagine a sinkhole opening up with fire spewing out of it like you'd think you were literally being dragged into hell so yeah people don't live here anymore shocker most of the buildings have now been demolished in the 80s the US government allocated funds to relocate the remaining residents and the local zip code was discontinued well, there you go next time you're like caught in a really long line or something or there's just too many people on the street just be glad it's nice to have people around yeah, you know? yeah, you could be here in one of these places. You could be in a town that uh, is haunted by a necromancy and witches and yeah, ghosts and stuff. Yeah, don't want that, so... No. Well, I want it a little bit. I'll visit. Oh, okay, you guys. My name's Hannah. And my name's James. We've been your host for today. And we will catch you next time. See ya. Cups used to collect the B L O O D of the deceased. That's a good way to say it. Just spell it out. Right? I've never thought of that. Now we're gonna say red fluid. Yeah, that's what I always say. It always sounds weird. Those who have visited the ancient grounds have told of dark for. No, no. <laughs> Sometimes you just get caught in a word like that. It's like, oh. Did you know that the snow in the Wizard of Oz was all asbestos? It's gross. <laughs> but yeah, this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working. Uh.